Right, so hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So as promised, I am releasing this tutorial just a day after the first bit got released for creating a banking system using Tikinta and using a plain text file as a database. So in this tutorial, we're going to try and complete the requirements that we didn't complete in the last one. So as it turns out, <coughs> this series is going to be quite long, so that might be a part three for this video. So in this tutorial, um, we're going to cover how to allow the user to log in into his or her account that they've just registered in the last tutorial. And we're going to be um, allowing the user to view balance and personal details. So first off, let me just cross off what we've done already. We've allowed the user to register for an account. So that's what we did in the last tutorial. And we kind of created the main base of the application. I mean, the GUI. So in this tutorial, we're going to allow the user to log in and we're going to allow the user to view balance and personal details. Right, so first off, what we want to do is I'm going to go ahead and open the file that I had in my last tutorial. <clears throat> if you haven't already watched um, the part one of this, I'm going to be linking it in the description. So go ahead and watch that first because otherwise this won't make sense at all. So top links in the description are going to be for help with Tikinta and um, the part one for banking system using Tikinta and a text file. So this is what we got in the last tutorial where we were able to finish the registration and pretty much allow the user to register for an account and save all those details that the user registers to into a little text file. Now what we're going to do in this tutorial is first off we're going to have to create a function where the user can log in. I think okay so in the last tutorial we did create a login function which was then assigned to the login um, button right here so whenever this login button is clicked the login function will be triggered so now let's go ahead and start coding that now first off what I want to do is we're gonna have to create a new pop-up window so before we even do that we're gonna have to um, initialize a few things actually we can actually move on to creating the screen first so let's create a new variable actually we're going to do a comment and say this is going to be the login screen of course so we need to create a new screen so what we're going to do is type in login screen equals top level master now the name of our main screen was master and we're using top level to create a little pop-up window now i'm going to quickly run this to show you where we got in the last tutorial so this was our little GUI app that was going in the last tutorial. We were able to click on register, type in a name, for example, um, age one, mail and password, password, and then click on register. Now we were also able to add validation to make sure that if, in, if a file with a name already exists, um, another user shouldn't be able to overwrite that information. So if I added Johan1 in here and then click on register, it says account has been created. But then just after, if I click on register again, it says account already exists so we kind of got that going as well we have validation same with the fields if we empty the field and click on register it says all fields required so this is what we did in the last tutorial <clears throat> so now what we want to do in this tutorial is when we click on login so far what we have going is a little pop-up window we will have to convert this into a full-on login screen where we have um, two entry fields for the user to type in the username and password and then a login button so that a session can be started so without further ado, let's go ahead and do that. First of all, I'm going to give my login screen a title because it's just inherited its parent title, which says banking app, which I don't like. Screen.title login. Cool. Now let's go ahead and create our labels. So labels and then first label. Label is just um, a widget in Tikinta that allows you to put some text on your screen. Uh, I want my label to be on my login screen, which we just created right now. The, the text for the label is going to be login to your account. I want the font to be set to Calibri and comma oops, 12 because that's the font size. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a grid where I want to place this um, in the zeroth row. The sticky is going to equals zero, but the sticky equals north, which means I want this to be in the dead center of the application. And then the padding Y is going to be 10, which means it's going to leave um, a distance of 10 from the 10 units from the top and 10 units from the bottom. Cool. 
let's run this quickly to show you what it does. I'm going to click on login now. And then as you see right here, we have a login into your account in the dead center of the screen. And it's got a 10 um, units padding on the top and bottom. So yeah, and it's also got a title of login. Now let's go ahead and do more of the complex stuff. Since we've got one of the labels ready, I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Now we need to create labels for name and password or username and password so that the user knows what they're actually entering. So I'm going to type in username in this one. I'm going to type in password in the second one because that's a password. We're going to have to add entries for that in a bit. So we have to change the row to one and two because we have row zero already. Now we have to change the row to one and to two. And I'm going to do the sticky to the west because I want it to go in the very left of my screen. And we don't need any padding for these. Um, they can be fine with just the rows. Right, so let's run this quickly to show you what's going on and as you see right here we have two little labels that says username and password on the very left hand side of the screen and we're going to put entries on the right hand side so that the user can actually enter username and password and then we're going to add a button that will allow the user to submit these details and actually log into their account right so what i need to do now is go ahead and create another label that's going to be a notification label now we create a new variable called login notif which is going to be equals to label um, this is going to be on login screen comma oops screen comma font is going to be equals to calibri comma 12. now we're not adding any text to this or anything we're just going to have an empty label called um, login notif I'm going to place this on the center and in row 4. I'm going to tick e equals more. Now, I'm placing it on row 4 because I still have another button that's going to be placed on row 3. Now, this login notif label is going to be used um, later to display um, whether the user has any errors in terms of if the user account doesn't exist or all fields required or anything like that. Pretty much. So, yeah, that's going to be that. And now what we need to do next is move on to creating our entry field. So entry, no, entry one, oops, entry one is going to be login screen, text variable equals temp, login name. Now this text variable is going to be storing the information that's entered into the entry temporarily that's why it's called temp login name we're going to have to create a variable with that name very soon and now i'm going to place this in row equals one comma column equals one comma padding x which means space from the left and right equals five now what this does is it's going to place itself in row one which is where the username label is row one and it's going to place itself in column one which is automatically the one to the right of the username label let me show you what i mean. Oops, not the register login okay it's telling me the temp login name is not defined so i'm going to show you guys in a moment um i'm going to have to do another entry for the password of course so bear with me copy and paste copy and paste is great um login name will change to login password now the error was because it's looking for this variable which doesn't exist so we're going to create that variable quickly in a moment um yeah and then we would change the row to two column remains uh, one and add x remains five let's quickly make these variables now i'm going to go to the top section of my login function and create a comment saying bars which means variables now i'm going to make these global so logo global m login name global m login password um, global notif because i'm going to be needing actually it's login notif i'm going to be needing that in another function later and global login screen which is this element right here we're going to have to destroy it in a bit i'm going to explain why later now i'm going to create the actual variable so temp login name equals a string variable just to give it, just to initialize it with something. Now it's going to store a string, of course. And temp login password is going to store a string as well. So it's going to be a string variable that stores a string. We've now successfully initialized these two variables. Now it shouldn't give us an error because we can pretty much find these two text variables up here. So these two. Now let's run this to show you how it looks like. Uh, 
about login and here we are so we have a nice little login into your account on the top of the screen it says username password and we have our entry fields cool so now what we need to do next is have a little login button at the bottom and then we should be good to go to the next function right so i'm going to create this button these comments try um, kind of make our code a lot neater than it would have been and it's easy to easily organized as well so the button needs to be on my login screen uh, text equals login that's the text on my button command equals login session that's going to be the function that is run whenever this um, login button is pressed width equals 15 uh, font equals Calibri, comma four, dot grid, pro equals three, comma sticky equals west, comma padding y, padding y equals five. I've already played with these values before creating this tutorial, so I know what I'm doing here. And comma pad, adding x equals five. This is just um, arguments to do with the placement of this button. So. Before running this, I'm going to go ahead and create a function called login session. Otherwise, this uh, the whole code's going to like moan about this function not existing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a function called yeah, login session. That's going to be above login. Uh, print. Oh no, we're just going to print session. Cool. Let's run this and hopefully it works. So login and command okay we haven't spelled it correctly so command needs to be spelled correctly cool. login and here we are so we have username password and a login button and when i click on login it says session now instead of session it should just open up the user session with the dashboard of all the buttons the three buttons the user dashboard is going to have are going to include view balance deposit and withdrawal and possibly an edit details button as well so let's go ahead and start coding our login session function now so do, 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 do. let me just quickly look at some naming conventions i have right so what we want to do next is go ahead and start coding our login session so I'm going to go in my login session function and in there the first thing I want to do is we're going to get a new variable which is going to be called all accounts equals um, operating system dot list directory. Now what this is going to do is going to return all the files that are in my current directory. Now this is going to include the name of the files and um, nothing else because our files don't have an extension. So I need to know what accounts are already in my directory so that I can read them or find out if those accounts actually exist because we're validating it using this login session function. Right, we need that and we also need the login name and the login password so that we can verify whether it's real or not. So login name is gonna be our variable which equals 10 login uh, name dot get and then login password is going to be a variable temple login password dot get if you remember i said this um these variables temporarily store these um this information whatever you enter into the entry and those need to be retrieved later using a get function so when the login button is pressed we're going to save the value of um the entry name into login name and the entry password into login password so that we can verify cool now that we have that information what we're going to do next is we're going to start a little for loop that's going to look through all the all the names in our directory so we do for name in all accounts all accounts is going to return a direct um, a list of pretty much all the names that are in our directory that's going to include all the account names cool so we're going to check if our login name is valid with one of the names in our directory so we're going to do something like if name equals login name print 
account exists. Cool. So that's all we're going to do for now. And we're going to do a return. I'm going to, this is obviously not how we're going to do it. But I just want to show you how it works. So I'm going to press on run. If I go on to log in if we've done everything correctly. And type in, uh, I don't know, unknown. And we don't need a password for now. And I click on login. Nothing happens because we've just said return. But if I put a valid name, it says account exists because um, if I show you my directory, right here I have a file called Johan because I've already registered with this name in the last tutorial. So Johan is a file that already exists in the directory, so it's checked for that name and it matches. So it's like, hey, an account exists. Now we need to go further, open that file and find out what password that file has and verify that against the password this user has entered. Now, to do that, it's very simple. We do file equals open uh, name, whichever, so it's going to be whichever name the user matched with, comma. We need to open this in read mode because we're not writing any data to it, we're just reading from it. Now, file data is going to be file.read, so that's going to include all the data from inside the file. Now, file data equals file data dot split n. So what this is going to do is it's going to overwrite the file data with an array of each um, each field of information that is included in this um, account file. So it's going to have each um, value on a different line because this right here is a new line character so it's going to split each value into its own property and store it in an array um, as, as, as soon as a new line is detected. So if I print file data here that might make a bit more sense. File data. It's pretty much going to print the file data for whichever account I log in into. So for now that's what I'm going to show you guys. So if I do let's say some random stuff. Nothing happened. But if I did like my actual one, Johan login uh, if you see right here as I said before it opens that file it reads through it and then it overwrites itself by with um, creating a list and in that list on uh, in that list we have Johan password 21 mil and for some reason we have an empty space as well let's try logging into another account that I have which is Johan 1 and let's see if the empty space still exists. Log in. It still does for some weird reason. Does that need to have another field in there? I don't think so. Let me quickly go and see why there's a new line there. Okay, so let's go on to our register function to find out. I mean, we're going to have to go to the finish register actually. Finish reg. All right, that makes sense. So when we do new file dot write um, gender plus n, I forgot to in the last tutorial mention that we need to also save a balance into this file. So obviously the balance the user starts with is going to be zero. So we need to do new. So we are in the finish break function. So go in there, go in your else statement where if the user has pretty much met all the requirements, the data is saved. Do a new argument after do a new line after the gender is saved and type a new file dot write um, zero and then that's about it. So we don't need to do a new line after that. It was giving a new as a new line because we were creating a new line, a blank new line after gender. So I'm gonna save this up. I'm going to go ahead in my folder and delete these two user accounts. And now I'm gonna go back into the banking GUI. Oh, and then I'm going to run this. I'm going to register first because I don't have any accounts at the moment. Johan, mail, password is password, of course, because that's the most secure. Oh, so now my account exists. I'm going to go log in. Johan, I don't need the password yet. So when I do now, if you notice, when I do log in, there's no blank. Um, blank line because we're not leaving a blank line this time we're actually inserting the balance in there so now we know that in our file data variable which is in the login session function the file data right here in there 
um, we have an array where the zeroth position is going to be the name. The first position of the array is going to be the password. Second position is going to be the age. Third position is going to be the gender. And fourth position is balance. So we can use that to now check whether the password we've given is actually correct or not. So we're going to do something like creating a new variable called password, which is going to be the password that exists in a file equals file data position one. So as you guys were shown before in our list or array, the first um, value, because we start from zero in lists, the first value is the password. Now we're going to do an if statement in here and do I'm actually going to do account dashboard in here because this is where the account dashboard will be created. If it's a success, if the login is a success, we do if login password, which bear in mind is the password that has just been entered into our entry. So it's the one we're um, archiving from temp login password right here. So login password equals temp login password like get. If this password that the user has just entered equals the password that exists in his or her file from registration, we are going to login screen dot destroy. So we need to destroy the previous screen because they have logged in and we need to open a new window that's going to be the account dashboard. So account dashboard equals top level master and then account oops, dashboard dot title dashboard cool so let me quickly run this to show you what happens so now it's actually going to require a password as well so if i do on login if i go on login i mean johan i click on login nothing is actually going to happen whereas previously it was showing us some details no it won't because it's expecting a password too now if I do something like password, which is the right password, and I log in, it says, oh, I spelled master wrong. Well done, Johan. Good. So password spelled correctly. Also, I've noticed something. Can you guys go back to your login function? Um, can you guys go into the entry for your password? And in there, can you put a comma next to the text variable argument and say show equals um, asterisk so that's going to hide your password instead of showing it. Cool. so i'm going to run this again and hopefully we're going to have success login uh, so now it's censored which is good password and voila if you notice in our code we mentioned we wanted to destroy the login screen which it did and it created a nice little new window pop-up that has, has the title of dashboard that's where the three buttons for all the user functions are going to be such as view balance, um, withdrawal deposit, and possibly an edit personal details function as well. Let's go back into our login session where we were coding a second ago. And then in here now, we need to also put a handle for when the username or password is not recognized. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So if the user login is correct, then we do this stuff. Else, we go back one indent so we need to be at the same indent as our for loop now and in there we're gonna do and actually we don't need to do that we need to go one indent forward so we need to be in the same indent as our if statement up here and then we need to type in else which is if the username and password don't match we need to do uh, if you guys remember, we had a little login.notif uh, label that we created earlier. That's what we're going to be using. So login notif dot config foreground equals red for the label because it's an error and text equals password incorrect. Cool. Uh, that's all for that. And then we need a return statement in there as well now next line is actually going to be going to the same indent as your yep so going to the same indent as your for loop or the rest of the code so going to the same indent as that and then typing in login notif.config foreground equals red comma text equals no account found 
that's the this is the handle for when when the loop runs completely so if the whole loop runs and it wasn't able to find um, any name that matches any of the files in our directory it's just gonna say no I can't found so that's all our handles done let's run this to see if they actually work log in uh, Okay, let's put a wrong password login it says password is incorrect perfect now let's put a wrong username login okay let's get rid of the password i guess login still saying password is incorrect uh let's put let's close login again login password incorrect um let's put the right user information so your hand and um password I actually typed it correctly okay for some reason it's stuck in that saying password incorrect okay. so we've done a for loop check for the name Is being extracted we know the password now and we've got a little if statement going where we're using a return then we've got the else statement to make sure that the password is incorrect then a return and then we have another login no it can't oh hmm. weird let's try it again maybe it was bugged out or something login So this issue has just started to happen after we've added this line I'm assuming. Previously it wasn't happening. Um, let me try and see if I can actually figure out why. It's really weird. Pretty sure I logged in once as well. Let's see. This is a bummer. Open read split. Get one. Come back. right here has to be in line with this right here so if I tab once it needs to be in line with this if statement right here so it needs to be if this login password matches then you open a session right here else you create a login notice saying password incorrect okay, sorry about that guys indentation issues and then I'm gonna get rid of this too now this should work flawlessly Invalid syntax. Mm. I don't know. Now. All right, I don't see the issue. Well, it's gonna say invalid syntax again. So let me push this forward one. 
and this. Wow, that is weird. Type in else again. What? Okay. Same valid syntax all of a sudden. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a really stupid issue. Alright, I see. So this return statement gets pushed forward one and again. And there we go. So what I did was I pushed the return statement in line with the if because that's how it needs to be. And sorry about those mistakes guys, I know it's very annoying, but it happens sometimes. Now I'm gonna type in the username, Johan, login, password incorrect. Uh, now if I type in a wrong username, no account found, which is what we programmed it to do. Johan, type in the username and password correct. Then we get something like this. We get our dashboard. Now we need to quickly program our buttons in there so that the user can click on some buttons and then we're gonna program the view balance function as well. So this tutorial is already very long, so I'm sorry about that, but this is for your own good as well, because you'll have a nice nice little program to your application to show up in your portfolio. So this is it for our account dashboard. We need to actually go ahead and add the labels and buttons on it now. So we've got only the basic, um, we've only got the basic label, I mean the basic window showing up for the moment. So we need to try and figure out how to fix that. Um, pretty easily we're going to do label account label so label account dashboard comma text equals account uh, text equals account dashboard Just to save time, since it's the same properties, I am going to go ahead and copy and paste. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this right here. Copy. And we will write here, so paste. This is what I only, this is the only bit I hate about ticking to applications, like creating the actual GUI is a bit jarring. Apart from that, I actually enjoy the logical bit. So, deposit.
equals 5, comma, sticky equals more, comma, pad y equals 10. That's going to leave a bit of space for us. Run this quickly to see if it works. Log into my actual account. With full security, of course. Legit. Login. And here we are. It says, welcome, Johan, because that's the name I logged in with. These three buttons are just dummies right now. We're going to add a bit of... We're going to add the command for personal details in this tutorial and the rest of the two buttons are going to be done in the next one. So let's go ahead and do that. Also the welcome needs to be capitalized. Unlock me. W. Capitalized. Cool. Now let's go ahead and add the commands for these buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and add the command. Just got to check my naming conventions once again. So first one is command. Command equals personal details second one is command equals deposit equals deposit and the last one is command equals withdraw withdraw cool oh, so let's go ahead and create these three functions personal details deposit and withdraw and just before that what we need to do is go ahead and this login name right here that we have going we need to make that public we're going to have to do global login name to make that public and available to all the other functions because we're going to need that in our in our functions when they're called so we're going to have to pretty much know what user is trying to view details so let's create these functions i'm going to go below this and create this function actually yeah might as well. so let's go below and type in def We'll create um, a dummy function for deposit that just says print deposit because we need to do this otherwise our buttons are going to cause a tantrum and def with draw print with draw. Cool. Now we need to actually program the one we're interested in which is view details. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I mean, it's personal so the name of the function we've added as a command now in here we need to quickly create a section for variables bars now we open the file that we have to get the details from the personal details that we need to get from we need to open that file which is why we made the login name from the previous function public so now we have that name open it in read mode because we just need to read same like last time, file data equals file.read a user details equals file data dot split so that it's split into a nice little array um, and then we actually know what detail is on which um, reference of the array now details the name equals user details zero so the name is placed at the zeroth location in the array and now it's saved as details name and we have details age equals user details two because on location one we have the password stored we don't need to show the user the password that's confidential and we need the gender user details i think it's going to be three yep it's three and then details balance is the last line which is user details four Cool. So that's all our details um, captured from our file. So we actually have those details now. Now all we need to do is kind of create a screen that's going to show the personal details. Um, and then we need to create labels that will show these details to the user. So personal details screen equals top level master. I'm pretty sure I could have come up with a better name, but it's quite late in the actually morning now. So quite late in the morning and brain is a function so we'll go with that one for now screen title personal details and now in there we're gonna have to do okay let's just comment this as personal detail screen and now we're gonna have to do the labels which is gonna be a massive list of labels so label plus, okay labels and I'm actually just gonna copy and paste to save time because the tutorial is got a lot. 
So let's go ahead and copy one of these labels up here. Copy and just paste it down here. Now I have one, two, three, four, five labels. So one, two, oops. Let's do the first one first and then it'll be a lot easier to copy and paste. So the label is not on account dashboard, it's now on personal details. The text is going to be name. And then we need the space and then we do plus details name. So it's actually going to show us the user's name with a little space and name. Cool. And font stays the same. The row is obviously zero. Sticky is no. Um, and padding wire is 10. Oh, that's perfect. So now, actually, this is here. We need to do a little introduction line. So instead of that, just change the text to personal details. That's like a little introduction text to our screen. So now we're going to have to do the name of the next line. So go ahead and copy and paste that and then change this to like we did previously, name, colon, plus um, details.name. And then we have to change a few properties in here, which are going to include changing the row equals one, one and sticky, sticky equals west. Cool. So that's what we need to change in there. And now we can pretty much copy and paste this four times. Uh, actually, do we need to paste it? Yeah, we do need to paste it. It's one, two, three, four. Cool. So we got the first one, the name. So I'm going to firstly go ahead and change the rows to three, four. So one, two, three, four. We need to have four rows in total, including the zero. And then I'm going to go ahead and change this name field um, in the second one to age. Change the name field again to, was it gender? Yeah, it was gender. And I'm going to change the name field again to balance. And I'm going to add a pound sign after the colon because hey we're dealing with um, GDP, GDP because we're in Great Britain so we're dealing with pounds right now. If you want to add US dollars or rupees go ahead and do that. Right so we need to change details.name to details.age. Wait no it's not details my bad details underscore we're not dealing with an object here just a variable so details underscore name details underscore age details underscore gender and details underscore balance now if everything works just fine we can finish it here otherwise we need to try and figure out what we want hopefully everything just works out fine login i'm going to type in my name your hand and password was password login uh personal details and as i expected What line is this error on? Personal details. I'm assuming I didn't spell it correctly. Oh, it's because it's personal. So I need to change add um, underscore screen here because I didn't realize or I didn't remember that I had called this personal detail screen and I knew obviously this naming convention wasn't a good idea but I just rolled with it at least we figured it out soon enough so let's fix that quickly uh, run this click on login now username and password password login personal details and voila you have a I don't I wouldn't say it's the most pretty looking but Hey, at least you have all the functionality working just fine. I'll leave the designing up to you guys so you can add more design if you like using grid. But we have personal details coming up at the center. Then we have our name popping up as we've saved in the file. We have our age as we saved in the file. Gender as we saved and balance as we didn't save because it automatically assigns you to the balance of zero. So when once these other functions are ready, which are going to include um, deposit and withdraw once those functions are ready we should be able to actually deposit money and withdraw money from the account and when we click on personal details the balance in there should be able to update as well 
So that was about it for today's tutorial guys, hope you have enjoyed, um, I apologize for a few errors that I had and uh, if, I had, if I wasted like, a bit of your time, um, but hey, uh, that showed you how to troubleshoot as well just in case you get stuck in those errors in the future. Anyway guys, I really appreciate all the support you guys have been showing me, if you guys could um, share this video just like you guys have been doing an amazing job at sharing on the previous tutorial, this would be amazing. Um, if you guys would um, like to, you can follow my socials and add up the Discord channel and join the Discord channel in the description. Um, also, if you guys would like to directly support the channel, you can do so by purchasing one of those um, super chat emojis or one of those super chat highlighted messages. Um, it really helps if you guys do because it kind of helps keep the channel running without really um, having to delay the videos, but it's totally up to you guys. No pressure at all If you guys are feeling like supporting the channel go ahead and do that while the video is premiering you can purchase um, Either custom emojis from the super chat or you can highlight messages, but that's totally up to you Not forcing anyone to do so um, Anyway guys that was it for today's tutorial. I will see your beautiful faces in the last tutorial for the series so, Peace out